In this lesson, we're going to look at a different scene of the film, and it's a scene that has entirely different problems than the last one. So before I say anything else, let's watch about 30 seconds of the scene, and I think you'll catch on to what the issues are. Hello, Wu residents. Alyssa? Yes, this is she. It's Tessa at the agency. Oh, hi. We left a few messages for you. Did you get them? Oh, no, sorry. There's a Nicole who's called here a few times asking for your work number. I told her our policy against giving out clients' numbers, but I told her I would call you personally to relay the message. Thanks. I'll call her. Okay. No problem. Now, in addition to all the normal problems that we face, which is balancing shots, dealing with a little bit of distortion and some lip smacks, things like that, we have a different problem here, which is perspective. We, the viewer, have sort of a godlike view on this. In other words, we can hear both sides of a telephone conversation. Now, in real life, if you're in the room with somebody who's talking, you of course hear them talk, but the most you can expect to hear from the other side is perhaps a little chirping. That's it. But you can't understand it. However, in a movie, if we're in a room with, say, Rock Hudson, we will of course hear everything he has to say. But oddly enough, we'll also hear what Doris Day is saying on the other end of the phone. And similarly, if we go to her room, we of course hear her quite clearly, but we'll also hear Rock as though he's going through a telephone. Now that's a reasonably complicated set of perspectives to keep track of. Now let's watch just the first couple of shots so we can establish what the issues are. Hello, Wu residents. Alyssa? Yes, this is she. It's Tessa at the agency. Oh, hi. We left a few now, up to here, there is absolutely nothing weird. Somebody speaks, somebody speaks, somebody speaks. So there's a picture cut, there's a sound cut, and except for cleaning up some stuff, nothing abnormal. However, look what happens now. We left a few messages for you. Did you get them? Oh, no, sorry. There's a Nicole. Now, we never cut away from Alyssa here. Same shot, but we hear Tessa on the other side speaking through the phone. Conceptually, not so problematic. However, it does create a few rules issues. So let me give you an example, something perhaps a bit more concrete to show you just what is actually going on here. This is an idealized phone split. I've renamed the tracks temporarily so it's easier to see what's going on. A phone split consists of four points of view. There are two live points of view and two through the telephone points of view. So in this example here, we have two people, Bill and Ann. We have Bill on camera, we have Ann on camera. We have Bill over the phone, and we have Ann over the phone. So far, so good. Now, here are the picture cuts. In the first shot, we have Bill on camera, here is Ann on camera, here is Bill on camera, and here is Ann on camera. So you have sort of a matrix here of what you're seeing versus what you're hearing. Now, the catch about this is that when the picture and the sound change at the same time, there's simply nothing to worry about. However, that is often not the case, as we saw in our example here. So where it gets weird is when a picture shot and a phone shot don't match. Now, the problem with that is twofold. The biggest problem is room tone. People might think that when this shot changes from, let's say, Tessa, giving out clients' numbers, but I told her to Alyssa, that you can just keep Tessa talking and maybe run her through some sort of phone filter if you want to give that effect. However, there's a problem with that. We are now in Tessa's universe, so we have Tessa's room tone while it's live. Here, we're in Alyssa's universe, and so we need Alyssa's room tone whenever we're seeing her. So in order to make sense of this, the first thing that we must do is to indicate where all the picture cuts are, because picture cuts mean everything in this particular case. Finding where the edits are is really not brain surgery, but I do want to show you two different ways to go about it just to see which one better suits your personality. The obvious one is to simply find the cut, which is you know, not very hard. It's something like that. Okay, in general, that's where the cut is. And then just go forward and backwards in quarter frames, and there's the cut. So this is the cut to, we'll call it T for Tessa. Now we keep going to the next oh, cut, yeah. which can be somewhere around here. There we go. That is the first frame. We'll call this Alyssa. And let's do one more this way. And now we're back to Tessa. Now, personally, I find this crazy making because I don't like all this rocking and back and forth. So there's another way which is clearly sort of nerdy, but uh, you know, nerds aren't altogether bad. 
let's find this cut here, the first cut we did for Melissa to Tessa, let's find this a different way. Now, we happen to know because we marked it that the cut is around 417. In fact, it's precisely at 417. To confirm that though, let's look on the EDL. Sure enough, here is an edit, which is a video edit as you see here, and it starts at 417 and it goes until 701. Just so happens that here's the audio cut that does precisely the same thing. So we know that that's the cut. Well, that didn't help us because we've already, uh, we already established that's the cut. However, if you take the out number for this video edit and copy it and move it into your time locator in the Pro Tools, boom, here you are parked on the next cut. This is not a miracle, but it's kind of cool. So what I like to do is simply go through the whole scene before I do anything, and I like to mark it up. So I find, remember, only the video edits. That's all you care about right now is just the video. So I find all the video edits, and I use these to mark where the cuts are going to be, and I simply mark the cuts this way. So I'm going to go through the first 10 or so events here, mark the cuts, and I'll soon return. I've marked now where the video cuts are. Now the next step is to move each of the appropriate clips to where they belong. In other words, are they sync on camera? Are they over the phone? Are they the other person's sync on camera? Is it the other person's over the phone? What is it? So now, let's do that. Now I've organized the clips so that they all make sense. On the top track here, we have Alyssa on camera. Every time we go to her, she's on camera in the same shot. Here on the C track, we have Tessa on camera. Here, here, and here. Here we have an oddball. We have Tessa speaking while we're looking at Alyssa here on the phone. Here we have, back to normal, we have Tessa. Once again, we're looking at Alyssa, but we have Tessa. So this is your basic organization for a phone split. Now, something you must remember is that a telephone is not a walkie-talkie. On a walkie-talkie, you're either keyed on or keyed off. So as soon as you let go of the button, you're gone, and the other person is talking, which is why you have to say over when you're done. On a phone, it's two-directional all the time. So whether you're talking or not, that track needs to have room tone. So here, for example, even though... Oh, hi. We left a few messages. Even though Alyssa quits talking for a while in order for Tessa to speak, we still have to have continuous room tone of Alyssa for this shot. Let's solo it and you'll understand why. Oh, hi. Oh, no, sorry. So suddenly during this gap here where she's not talking, where there's no room tone, she's dying because there's no, there's no air, there's no air. She can't live there. So we need to tone this out. Similarly, for Tessa, when she is on the phone, see she's talking sync here, she's talking on the phone here, we still need to tone this out because she is continuously available to Alyssa. So there has to be room tone here and room tone here. Similarly, here we have Tessa live, that's no big deal. Then, giving out clients numbers, but I told her I would call She continues to talk, but we're seeing Alyssa, therefore, Alyssa needs room tone here. Let's see what happens at the end here. Same issue. We cut now from Alyssa to a live shot. Okay. This is perfectly normal here. So what I think we'll do is let's go look at this section here. I have added the room tone during areas where there was none. So that, for example, during this shot of Alyssa, we have solid room tone. At the same time, while Tessa is over the phone, we have solid room tone wherever she's not talking. So in other words, nobody drops out from their point of view. So let's watch this. Yes, this is she. It's Tessa at the agency. Oh, hi. We left a few messages for you. Did you get them? Oh, no, sorry. There's a Nicole who's called here a few times asking for your work number. I told her our policy against giving out clients numbers, but I told her I would call you personally to relay. Okay, you see how it works. The only thing left is to test this. Now there is a question of who is going to do the filtering if in fact there's going to be a phone effect. Sometimes you get a very distinct phone effect so that it sounds almost realistic. Other times the director wants no effect at all, so it's like two people talking together, which is another reason why it's important to have all these splits because it makes it controllable.
Whatever the case, no matter who is going to actually do the EQ, you need to test your setup to make sure that you didn't make a mistake. This is simple. That's a very, very short scene, and we got our matrix right. However, it's, if you have a long, complicated scene, let's say two minutes, three minutes long, something like this, and you work and work and work and work, you're going to make a mistake. You absolutely positively are going to make a mistake because that's what people do. So I just put in any kind of uh, a filter here, like a high pass, low pass. Let's put in a high pass. Let's put in a low pass. Let's be silly and crazy. Jigga, jigga, jigga. Let's be silly and crazy. The only purpose of this filter, and in this case I'm using a, a Q10 by Waves, is to screw it up. It's to make sure that the, what should be the phone tracks indeed are the phone tracks. This will tell you if you put something in the wrong place. Hello, Wu residents. Alyssa? Yes, this is she. It's Tessa at the agency. Oh, hi. We left a few messages for you. Did you get them? Oh, no, sorry. There's a Nicole who's called here a few times asking for your work number. I told her our policy against giving out clients numbers, but I told her I would call you personally to relay. Okay, you get the drift. This sounds nothing like a phone filter, but it enables you to make sure that you put things in the right place. That's pretty well it for a phone split.